Abdullah Akalan Oj Lan, Turkish, Ad, born about 1947, also known as Apo short for both Abdullah and Uncle. In Kurdish, is a Kurdish nationalist leader and one of the founding members of the militant Kurdistan Workers' Party PKK. Akalan was arrested in 1999 by the Turkish National Intelligence Agency MIT with the support of the CIA in Nairobi and taken to Turkey, where he was sentenced to death under Article 125 of the Turkish Penal Code, which concerns the formation of armed organizations. The sentence was commuted to aggravated life imprisonment when Turkey abolished the death penalty in support of its bid to be admitted to membership in the European Union. From 1999 until 2009, he was the sole prisoner on Imrali Island, in the Sea of Marmara. Akalan now argues that the period of armed warfare is past and a political solution to the Kurdish question should be developed. The conflict between Turkey and the PKK has resulted in over 40,000 deaths, including PKK members, the Turkish military, and civilians, both Kurdish and Turkish. From prison, Akalan has published several books, the most recent in 2015. Genealogy, also known as the science of women, is a form of feminism advocated by Akalan and subsequently a fundamental tenet of Kurdish nationalism. Biography <inaudible> <inaudible> Akalan was born in Omerli, a village in Halfedi, Sanlıurfa province in eastern Turkey. While some sources report his birthday as being 4 April 1948, no official birth records for him exist, and he himself claims not to know exactly when he was born, estimating the year to be 1946 or 1947. He is the oldest of seven children. According to some sources, Akalan's grandmother was an ethnic Turk and he once claimed that his mother was also an ethnic Turk. According to Amikam Nishmani, lecturer at the Bar Ilan University in Israel, Akalan did not know Kurdish when he met him in 1991. Nishmani, he Akalan, told me that he speaks Turkish, gives orders in Turkish, and thinks in Turkish. Akalan's brother Osman became a PKK commander, serving until defecting with several others to establish the Patriotic and Democratic Party of Kurdistan. His other brother, Mehmet Akalan, is a member of the Pro-Kurdish Peace and Democracy Party BDP. .After graduating from a vocational high school in Ankara Turkish, Ankara Tapu Kadasro Meslik Lisesi, Akalan started working at the Diyabakir Title Deeds Office. He was relocated one month later to Bakırköy, Istanbul. Later, he entered the Istanbul Law Faculty but transferred after the first year to Ankara University to study political science. His return to Ankara normally impossible given his situation was facilitated by the state in order to divide a militant group, Dev Cenk Revolutionary Youth Federation of Turkey, of which Akalan at the time was a member of. President Suleyman Demirel later regretted this decision, since the PKK was to become a much greater threat to the state than Dev Cenk. In 1978, in the midst of the right and left wing conflicts which culminated in the 1980 Turkish coup d'etat, Akalan founded the Kurdistan Workers' Party, PKK, which launched a war against the Turkish government in order to set up an independent Kurdish state. In July 1979 he fled to Syria, where he remained until October 1998, when the Syrian government expelled him. Akalan attempted in early 2004 to arrange a meeting with Murray Bookchin through his lawyers, describing himself as Bookchin's student, eager to adapt his thought to Middle Eastern society. Bookchin was too ill to accept the request. In May 2004 Bookchin conveyed this message. My hope is that the Kurdish people will one day be able to establish a free, rational society that will allow their brilliance once again to flourish. They are fortunate indeed to have a leader of Mr. Akalan's talents to guide them." When Bookchin died in 2006, the PKK hailed the American thinker as, "...one of the greatest social scientists of the 20th century," and vowed to put his theory into practice. Kurdish–Turkish conflict In 1984, the PKK initiated a campaign of armed conflict, comprising attacks against government forces in Turkey as well as civilians in order to create an independent Kurdish state. As a result, the United States, European Union, NATO, Syria, Australia, Turkey, and many other countries have included the PKK on their lists of terrorist organizations. Topic. Capture and trial 
Until 1998, Akalan was based in Syria. On at least one occasion, in 1993, he was detained and held by Syria's General Intelligence Directorate but later released. As the situation deteriorated in Turkey, the Turkish government openly threatened Syria over its support for the PKK. As a result, the Syrian government forced Akalan to leave the country, but did not turn him over to the Turkish authorities. Akalan went to Russia first and from there moved to various countries, including Italy and Greece. In 1998 the Turkish government requested the extradition of Akalan from Italy. He was at that time defended by Britta Bowler, a high-profile German attorney who argued that he fought a legitimate struggle against the oppression of ethnic Kurds. He was captured in Kenya on 15 February 1999, while being transferred from the Greek embassy to Jomo Kenyatta International Airport in Nairobi, in an operation by the Mili Istibarat Teskalati Turkish National Intelligence Organization reportedly with the help of the CIA. George Kostoulas, the Greek consul who protected him, said that his life was in danger after the operation. Speaking to Kandundar on NTV Turkey, the deputy undersecretary of the Turkish National Intelligence Organization, Savat Wuns, said that Akalan impeded American aspirations of establishing a separate Kurdish state. The Americans transferred him to the Turkish authorities, who flew him back to Turkey for trial. His capture led thousands of Kurds to protest at Greek and Israeli embassies around the world. Kurds living in Germany have been threatened with deportation if they continue to hold demonstrations in support of Akalan. The warning came after three Kurds were killed and 16 injured during the 1999 attack on the Israeli consulate in Berlin. After his capture, Akalan was held in solitary confinement as the only prisoner on Imrali Island in the Sea of Marmara. Although former prisoners at Imrali were transferred to other prisons, more than 1,000 Turkish military personnel were stationed on the island to guard him. A state security court consisting of three military judges was convened on the island to try him. Akalan was charged with and convicted of treason and separatism, and sentenced to death. This sentence was commuted to life imprisonment upon the abolition of the death penalty in Turkey in August 2002. No one had been executed in Turkey since 1984. The Kurdish Human Rights Project KHRP may have aided this case's decision. Following the commutation, Akalan remained imprisoned on Imrali, and was the sole inmate there. In November 2009, Turkish authorities announced that Akalan would be relocated to a new prison on the island and that they were ending his solitary confinement by transferring several other PKK prisoners to Imrali. They said that Akalan would be allowed to see them for 10 hours a week. The new prison was built after the Council of Europe's Committee for the Prevention of Torture visited the island and objected to the conditions in which he was being held. In 2005, the European Court of Human Rights ruled that Turkey had violated Articles 3, 5, and 6 of the European Convention of Human Rights by granting Akalan no effective remedy to appeal his arrest and sentencing him to death without a fair trial. Akalan's request for a retrial was refused by the Turkish court. Since the 27th of July 2011, his lawyers have not been allowed to see Abdullah Akalan anymore. The lawyers have appealed 700 times for visits, but all were rejected. The last time Abdullah Akalan was visited was on the 11th of September 2016 by his brother Mehmet Akalan. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Proposal for political solution. Abandoning his pre-capture policy, which involved violence targeting civilians as well as military personnel, Akalan has advocated a relatively peaceful solution to the Kurdish conflict inside the borders of Turkey. Akalan called for the foundation of a truth and justice commission by Kurdish institutions in order to investigate war crimes committed by the PKK and Turkish security forces. A parallel structure began functioning in May 2006. In March 2005, Akalan issued the Declaration of Democratic Confederalism in Kurdistan calling for a border-free confederation between the Kurdish regions of eastern Turkey called Northern Kurdistan by Kurds, East Syria, Western Kurdistan, Northern Iraq, South Kurdistan, and West of Iran, East Kurdistan. In this zone, three bodies of law would be implemented, EU law, Turkish, Syrian, Iraqi, Iranian law and Kurdish law. This perspective was included in the PKK program following the Refoundation Congress. In April 2005, Akalan had his lawyer, Ibrahim Bilmaz, release a statement 28 September 2006, calling on the PKK to declare a ceasefire and seek peace with Turkey. Akalan's statement said, 
the PKK should not use weapons unless it is attacked with the aim of annihilation, and that it is very important to build a democratic union between Turks and Kurds. With this process, the way to democratic dialogue will be also opened. On 31 May 2010, however, Akalan said he was abandoning an ongoing dialogue between him and Turkey saying that, "...this process is no longer meaningful or useful." Turkey ignored his three protocols for negotiation that included a, his terms of health and security b, his release and c, a peaceful resolution to the Kurdish issue in Turkey. Though the Turkish government received these protocols, they were never published. Akalan stated that he would leave the top PKK commanders in charge of the conflict. However, he also said that his comments should not be misinterpreted as a call for the PKK to intensify its armed conflict with the Turkish state. More recently, Akalan has shown renewed cooperation with the Turkish government and hope for a peaceful resolution to three decades of conflict. On 21 March 2013, Akalan declared a ceasefire between the PKK and the Turkish state. Akalan's statement was read to hundreds of thousands of Kurds gathered to celebrate the Kurdish New Year and it states, Let guns be silenced and politics dominate. A new door is being opened from the process of armed conflict to democratization and democratic politics. It's not the end. It's the start of a new era. Turkish Prime Minister Recep Tayyip Erdogan welcomed the statement and hope for a peaceful settlement has been raised on both sides. Soon after Akalan's declaration was read, the functional head of the PKK, Murat Karayilan responded by promising to implement the ceasefire, stating, "...everyone should know the PKK is as ready for peace as it is for war." Topic Democratic confederalism Since his incarceration, Akalan has significantly changed his ideology, reading Western social theorists such as Murray Bookchin, Emanuel Wallerstein, Fernand Braudel, fashioned his ideal society as democratic confederalism, drawing heavily on Bookchin's libertarian socialist idea of communalism, and refers to Friedrich Nietzsche as a prophet. He also wrote books and articles on the history of pre-capitalist Mesopotamia and Abrahamic religions. With his 2005 Declaration of Democratic Confederalism in Kurdistan, Akalan advocated for a Kurdish implementation of Bookchin's The Ecology of Freedom via municipal assemblies as a democratic confederation of Kurdish communities beyond the state borders of Syria, Iran, Iraq, and Turkey. Akalan promoted a platform of shared values, environmental defense, self-defense, gender equality, and pluralistic tolerance for religion, politics, and culture. While some of his followers questioned Akalan's conversion from Marxism-Leninism, the PKK adopted Akalan's proposal and began to form assemblies. Followers of Akalan and members of the PKK are known, after his diminutive name, as Apaku under his movement, Apakulik Apoism. Topic Publications Akalan is the author of more than 40 books, four of which were written in prison. Many of the notes taken from his weekly meetings with his lawyers have been edited and published. Interviews and Speeches. London, Kurdistan Solidarity Committee, Kurdistan Information Centre, 1991. 46 p. Translation of his 1999 defence in court at the Wayback Machine archived 20 October 2007 Prison Writings, The Roots of Civilization London, Ann Arbor, Michigan, Pluto, 2007. ISBN 9780745326000 Topic Media Since 1971-1971-1971-1971-1971-1971-1971-1971-1971-1971-1971-1971-1971-1971-1971-1971-1971-1971-1971-1971-1971-1971-1971-1971-1971-1971-1971-1971-1971-1971-1971-1971-1971-1
Defending a Civilization. The Political Thought of Abdullah Akhil in London, UK, Pluto Press, 2017. ISBN 9 trillion seven hundred eighty billion seven hundred forty five million three hundred ninety nine thousand seven hundred sixty eight Topic see also PJAK topic notes topic references topic further reading Kurd locked in solitary cell holds key to Turkish peace the 15th of March 2013 Wall Street Journal Ozkan Ali Kemal 2005 Turkey's Kurds a theoretical analysis of the PKK and Abdullah Akhalan London and New York, Routledge. ISBN 0-415-36687-9. Greece and the Middle East Spiros C.H. Kaminaris, Middle East Review of International Affairs, Vol. 3, No. 2 June 1999. Topic external links Special Report, The Ocalan File, BBC News, 26 November 1999.